Thank you, William. Good morning. Good morning. Let us read together. Let's turn to page six of the hymnal. And let us read together the greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Now let's turn to number 810. And let's do verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 16 of Psalm 91. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because you had made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For God will give His angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will, they will bear, bear you up on their, their hands, hands, lest you, you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and show them my salvation. Sing number 714, I know whom I have believed. Number 714. Come in. 
So this morning, our opening prayer is on page six, and I invite you to join me with that as well. Hello, guys. Welcome. Hey, Parker. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 26, that is, verses 1 through 11. When you have come to the land... Your God is given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle it in. You shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you have harvested from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God, that I have come into the land that the Lord swore unto our ancestors to give us. And when the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down from Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty in purpose. Populous. When the Egyptian treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and a terrifying display of power with signs and wonder and brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit on the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. That then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and to your house. The word of the Lord for the people of God. All right, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. After four weeks of watching you all on TV or on my phone, you all get to see me today. Well, let's give her a hand for walking up here. <laughs> being back. We, we have missed Michelle. Thank you all. Should have done that. <laughs> it's been an emotional four weeks. I've had a lot of ups and downs and good things and bad things. And But I thank God for getting me through all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you all will never know how much I missed you all. This morning on our announcements, uh, Sunday school is Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Our worship service is at 11. Our Wednesday night service begins at 5.30 with fellowship and pizza. Our Bible study begins at 6 p.m. We're going to be using the upper room daily devotions for our Sunday for our study beginning this Wednesday. Our mission celebration dinner is March the 20th. The sign up sheet is still laying out there. If you forget what you're bringing, make sure you review that and uh, get your stuff together. Our baskets are still available. We have three lanes of giving. Our international lane of giving is UMCOR. Our regional lane of giving is Mountain Mission School in Grundy. Our local lane of giving is the West Care Shelter. Looking forward to that dinner, first one we've had in a very long time. Uh, can I mention something real quick on the UMCOR? is there working with the refugees with Ukraine and so uh, that's a very timely gift that we're going to be giving this year for uh, the MCOR. Just want to mention that. We've had some birthdays this week. Today is Gail Pinson's birthday. We wish she was here with us. Sandy Walters had a birthday, and Libby White had a birthday this past week. 
So let's sing happy birthday to them or just wish them a happy birthday. Uh, since they're not here with us, we wish them a happy birthday. And when you're back in church with us, we'll gladly sing to you. Speaking of Libby, uh, we, uh, we purchased some of the little breads uh, from her. Uh, when you leave, we'll give you one. Be sure every family gets one to take home. Uh, so with our communion today, that, that is a gift to you all. Any other announcements? Samantha. It's just so nice seeing you back and Johnny back on the piano this morning. It was so wonderful to see you back and, and William this morning sharing so beautifully. So it's just beautiful seeing everyone share their talents. Yes. This morning on our prayer list, we want to remember Steve and Marcia Elswick. Liam Webb uh, has a brain tumor, but he got to go home yesterday, I think, at least one day this week. Chris Anderson is still home healing, and I thank you all for my prayers for my recovery. I still desire your prayers. I got about six to eight more weeks of therapy to go through, and that's not fun. Mm -hmm. I continue to remember Johnny. She has therapy continue on her arm, and I know that's not fun. Uh, David Stratton, or David Chaffins, is doing good, and uh, they want to thank everyone for all the prayers for them and continue to pray for them. Any other spoken prayer requests? I'd like to remember uh, my uh, co worker Heather's husband is having a shoulder surgery, and she told me that she is in panic mode because he's going to be out of work for like six weeks, and financially, she doesn't know how they're going to make it. So um, just pray for that situation for her. My mom's only living sibling passed away yesterday, my Uncle Don Ward. So remember that family in prayer. We can't go be with them because the day before my surgery, I had to put my mom in the nursing home. Uh, that's the hardest day I've had in a very long time. Her heart was broken as well as mine. but. Uh, She's not able to go to Louisville, and uh, I can't drive, of course, so we wish we could be with the family, but we can't. So continue to remember my mom and my Uncle Don's family in your prayers. If no other spoken request, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. I'd like to, before we pray, just kind of reiterate what has already been said and Samantha mentioned. And so thankful to be in a church where people are using their gifts and, uh, you know, in, in extremely large churches, uh, that's not always possible because they have so many people and most of them are paid people. Uh, your musicians are paid. Uh, just about uh, the, you know, everybody that does uh, children's ministry, whatever, are, they're all paid. And most of our people here, uh, we, with the exception of the pastor, is all volunteer. And so I'm so thankful that you guys step up. When, when Johnny was not able to play, uh, it was William who came and said, I'll, I can do that. I'll, I'll step up and do that. And I was so thankful because uh, it was a time that, you know, we didn't know what we were going to do. And it, it was a, he's done a great job. It's been good for him and good for us as well. And now today to see them both using their talents, you know, Johnny back, as she said, and, and, and William doing the prelude. And, and just all of you who continue to, to share your talents. And when Michelle was out, uh, Stella stepped up and started doing some of the things that she was was uh, doing uh, in the nurture committee and uh, just thank you all as all, all I know and, and there's so many of you I mean we could just go on and on but as we look around the church I see uh, so many of you that have had your imprint on this church you know Richie with all the the work that's been done on the church and, and you know not only with the elevator and the upstairs and the downstairs I could just go on and on uh, but thank you all and, you know, uh, we really are better as a team. You know, it's one of the things uh, I've learned as a director that, uh, you know, some people want to do it all themselves. And, and I've found that, uh, it, you know, if you allow people to share their talents and skills, we're better. We do better. And so thank you for being willing to serve today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Just take a moment of silence to pray for the people of Ukraine as we begin. Take a moment to just give God thanks and praise for His goodness.
invite you to offer your confessions to the Lord today. And your supplications, those prayers that were mentioned the morning, this morning and the unspoken prayers, prayers of your heart. Let's uh, pray the Lord's Prayer together today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so we'll uh, mention our offerings. Uh, again, the plate is, is in the back, and we thank you for, for your giving uh, each and every week and your faithfulness. So if you weren't able to uh, see it when you come in, ju as just as you're walking out the offering plate, you can drop that in. And uh, we appreciate your giving. If you don't have it to give, uh, the Lord bless you as well. And so uh, today we're going to do our doxology and then ask Richie if he would pray. excited to hear what John has for us today. Somebody playing the drum? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> uh, John, you need some, uh, I guess you need a beat behind it. <clears throat> Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Yes. As we <clears throat> think about the uh, mission dinner that we're going to have and the giving to the Grundy Mountain Mission, we do have a Kentucky connection to that uh, agency. The uh, Kentucky's star basketball player, Oscar Shebway, is uh, in fact a graduate of that uh, mission school. He came to the United States at age 16 and uh, attended uh, school there. And I read uh, this week that he saw this week, this past summer, I was able to visit with his family uh, for the first time since uh, uh, coming here at age 16. Wow. He's been that way, that long away from his family. He's a tremendous man of God. And a, uh, on Sundays, and I guess at other times, uh, he preaches and witnesses. He's probably standing in a pulpit uh, right now somewhere in central Kentucky, mm. either preaching or witnessing. So wow. we have a connection to that uh, mission school. Reading our scripture text from Luke uh, chapter 4, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was finished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Let's pray. Father, we know that the opportune times for the devil come at our very highest points and at our very lowest points. Give us the wisdom, Father, and help us to know the scriptures that, like Jesus, we might repel the evil one by reciting scriptures in our heart and on our lips. Bless our pastor now as he comes and opens those scriptures to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. There was a sheriff one time that was <coughs> interviewing a young man for a position in a little country town. And this fellow wasn't known to be the brightest tool. Uh, so he was asking some basic questions and basically started off by saying, uh, what is one and one? And the boy thought for a minute and he said, 11. And the guy said, well, technically he's kind of right. And I said, well, uh, <coughs> You got that one right, and he's like, name two days that starts with the letter 
two days of the week that starts with the letter T. And he said, today and tomorrow. <laughs> the sheriff said, well, I didn't really thought of that, but yeah, that's kind of right too. And how about this? He said, can you tell me who shot and killed Abraham Lincoln? Well, that guy really was scratching his head thinking, and then he's like, I, I just don't know. And the sheriff said, I want you to go home and figure it out, and then we'll talk. So the guy goes home and runs into some of his friends, and they were all excited to see how his interview went. And he said, interview went great. The job is mine. He said, I've already got my first murder case. So, uh, <clears throat> Well, you could say that this story in Luke is Jesus' first case, his first uh, day on the job. In a sense, it's sort of an interview, I guess. He is being tested. And Jesus, being God and man both, uh, this was an actual test. You know, we, we try to think, well, was it a really test? Uh, yeah, it was an actual test. Jesus really was hungry. Jesus really was in the wilderness. And so this story that takes place in the book of Luke, and, and you know, we're beginning our Lenten journey today, and some of us started at Wednesday night with Ash Wednesday. And today is our first Sunday in what we call Lent. And Lent is a time of reflection, and it leads up to Easter, of course, but it's a time of personal reflection. And I don't want us to think that Lent is all about looking at our failures. It's, it's not. I mean, it's, it's confronting our, our, you know, our sins and all that. Yes, it's part of that. But Lent can also be a time of being thankful for one another, for the blessings that God gives us. It, it's a time for when we realize right now our church has been uh, reeked with all kinds of illness and uh, ailments and, and broken bones and all these things, surgeries, that it makes us appreciate one another even more. And so Lent could be a time of thankfulness too, a time of realizing how blessed we really are. And so this story begins appropriately, appropriately enough in the wilderness, which is where most of our lives are, right? We find ourselves, the scripture says that, that uh, he was led to the wilderness. One, ver one passage of the gospel says he was drove into the wilderness. And we find that a lot of our life is spent in the wilderness and in the desert. And, uh, you know, life is, is a challenge. And I think today, as I look at this story, I want to say that I don't want this to become a story that is about how we're supposed to be perfect and never fail and learn how to be like Jesus and never mess up and never give in to temptation. Because let's all be honest, we all do fail. I'm getting a text there. My brother. Okay. Uh, he must not be in church today. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, uh, I, just think about the fact that we all realize that we're human and that we're going to fail. So to me, this story is not really about how to always be perfect like Jesus, although we can strive to be like him. But it teaches us a couple things, and one is that, that we're all, we're all uh, really going to be tempted. We're all going to be found, our, found in the wilderness. And we all have an enemy that we must face, sometimes more than one. And we must realize that with these temptations that there, there are resources that we can use. But more important than any of that, I think, is to realize that Jesus was the one who went through these temptations and overcame every one of them. And He and others can help us through our temptations in life. So if you look at these real uh, real quick at these kind of three temptations that we talk about. The first one is a temptation really that has to do with appetite. Anybody ever have a problem with that? Anybody ever deal with, with the appetite? And, and you know, uh, you know it, for some of us it's like, uh, you know, am I going to eat that fourth donut or whatever? And, 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 you know, for Jesus, though, it's 40 days without food. It's a little different than, than you know, just eating that donut. It's like that fellow, you know, that uh, 
was praying, you know, if it was God's will for him to have that donut, a uh, Krispy Kreme donut, that he would provide a parking place miraculously, just open up a parking place. And sure enough, after 13 times driving around, the parking place appeared. And, you know, some of us are like that. We're like, uh, we, we know what the answer is, and we, we know what the right thing is. We were talking about it, I think, Wednesday night, uh, Stella or somebody mentioned, you know, the fact that we know what to do a lot of times. We know what the right thing, but we just doing it is not always uh, an easy thing. So first of all, he is tempted with the appetite. And of course we know he responded by man or people shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so Jesus confronted every temptation with, with Scripture and truth. And so he's basically saying that we are to be dependent and our resources and our, our lives should not be about things and acquiring this and that and worried about every little thing, but really seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things that shall be added unto you. Then the second one has to do with power. That's where Satan takes him up into the high mount. Well, first of all, he, he shows him the kingdoms on this mountain. And he says, look at all these kingdoms of this world. They're all yours if you'll just fall down and worship me. And then Jesus says, no, thou shalt serve only the Lord thy God and worship him and him alone. And in fact, uh, you know, Peter later would, uh, would tempt Jesus as well. Uh, because the next one says uh, that Satan came to him and said, you know, if you'll cast yourself down, he's up on this, the temple here on the mountain, and if you'll cast yourself down on these rocks, on these, like basically a rock cliff, and people see that you, you know, God miraculously saves you, they'll know that you're the Messiah. A real temptation there. And yes, if he had thrown himself down, and they would have saw him, have seen him, you know, miraculously saved. That many people would have thought, "What a miracle!" But Jesus said, "No," once again, and resorted to Scripture: "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." And so, with. Each and every temptation Jesus dealt with, there was also a, a kind of a, a reaction to Scripture and going back to the ground of Scripture. Now, if we look at this, we go back to what Satan was telling Jesus and offering him. He was really... <laughs> it's okay. So we've got to uh, understand that Jesus was really um, being tempted. What, what was the temptation all about? Because first of all, the kingdoms of this world are not as you and I think of it. You know, Jesus is offered the kings of this world. And you say, well, he's already the king of kings and lord of lords. He already owns all those things, right? But yet the Bible does say that Satan is the god of this world. So here's the thing. Jesus is king, and some days ultimately all those things will be, be his. Because the Bible says he will rule and reign with Christ and sit down at the feet of Jesus. And that he will be supreme ruler over all. But not yet. Not yet. Before that could happen. Before there could be a crown, there had to be a cross. Before there could be uh, the reign of Christ and Jesus being supremely on the throne for all to see, he first had to go through this time of testing and this time of really having to go through the cross. And so the real test, I think, was that Satan was trying to get Jesus to take a shortcut to glory. Think about it. Jesus could have ushered in the kingdom of God right then and there. Jesus could have went ahead and said, okay, I'm going to declare my kingdom now, which would have been bad news for most of us. But he could have done that. And what Satan was really trying to get Christ to do was to bypass the cross and to bypass the suffering and really do a shortcut to the throne. 
Therein is the great temptation of life. For us to bypass the way, the Via Della Rosa, the, the way of the cross, the way of suffering, the, the way of, of tears and sweat and all these things in order to get to the glory and bypass everything. That's our temptation many, many times if you think about it. Here we are in this life. And there's so many people today who want to get to the top without ever starting at the bottom rung first. Most of us, and I, I don't know everybody for story, but I would say most of us did not, was not handed a silver spoon in life. Most of us didn't just, you know, wasn't born with a silver spoon in our mouth. We had to work and endure and, and go to school and do what we needed to do to get where we are today. But yet there are so many people today who want to be able to have all those things that we now have without doing what we did to get there, really. I think of, of the, 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 the boy living in the basement, the, the, I should say boy or girl, man or woman, who's in their 20s and 30s and still living with mom, still living in the basement. And, and mom is like, you need to get a job, you need to get a job. And dad's like, you need to get a job and get a job. Like old song I remember, get a haircut and get a real job, you know. And they're like, you need to get a job. And the boy's like, well, I'm holding out for management, you know. I'm holding out for a management position. You see, uh, a lot of people don't want to, they want to be a manager before they ever start at the bottom level. And that's just not the way life works for most of us. I can say a few of us are maybe gifted with, uh, you know, wealth or all of that. But for most of us, we have to work to get what we have. And most of you have spent the time the education, you put the hours in the books, you've, you've, you've stayed up and burned the midnight oil, you've done what you had to do to get where you are. Most of us, most of us, maybe all of us here today, and some of us watching today, were not handed everything on a silver platter. And I think that in order for us to really understand and appreciate the goodness of God, we have to go through that, or anything really that's worth receiving. Because here's what I've learned. I've learned that if you have to work for it, if you have to sweat for it, if you have to earn it, you appreciate it more than if it's just simply handed to you. And that's just the way things are. And so today we appreciate what we have because we had to work to get it. Jesus here in this story is really given this perfect example of how we are to go through that time of testing, that time of trial, that time of in the desert in order to get to where we need to be. It's like somebody said, you know, we, uh, there's a lot of people who want to, to board a ship, but you have what you call stowaways who get on the ship who, who aren't supposed to be there. They sneak on the ship and they hide out and they don't help with the cleaning the deck. They don't help with steering the boat. They don't help when the storms get rough and they need somebody to help. They're just along for the free ride. Well, sometimes in the Christian life we're sort of that way. Well, we don't want to do any of the work. We just want to show up and watch everybody else work. We're just there for the free ride. Sometimes a free dinner. <laughs> but here's the th truth. Christ has given all of us this responsibility to serve Him. He saved us to serve. And so that's what we're supposed to do today. We're supposed to serve Christ. And as we go through the times of testing and the times of trials, as we go through these times, whether we pass or fail the test, and many times we will fall flat on our face. And I can tell you that some of the temptations of life will try us and we will fail. But God is always there to comfort us. And you know what? Guess what? Even if you pass with flying colors, you'll be tested again. Because the Bible says that Satan left him for a while for an a opportune time. An opportune time, meaning that there will be those other times of testing. And so there's always an opportune time for not only uh, displaying our faith and doing God's will, but opportune times of testing and trials. 
And so trials will come. Testings will come. And we will sometimes be tested beyond even our ability to cope with it. But here's what I know. God says that I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And with all points of testing, there's always a way of escape. There's an escape hatch if we want it. If we need it, it's there. And so today, uh, just understand that we are we are on this journey together. We're in the wilderness together. And sometimes we need each other to help us through the wilderness of life. And I invite you today, if you would, to turn in your hymnal to page 881 as we give the response of the word, the Apostles' Creed that you're very familiar with. Before we move into our next part of the service of communion, I invite you to join me here. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 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 Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might. <laughs> Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dear Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Invite you at this time to partake. You want to play a refrain or something? Well, we'll sing our next hymn is Seek You First the Kingdom of God. Please stand as we turn to number 405. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First verse of Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Grace did 